a healthy vagina, yeah? And of course, this conversation is on the back of that statement by the Ministry of Health, mm -hmm. where they advise the public against the use of yoni pearls, which may be referred to as vaginal detox pearls, herbal tampons, cleansing pearls, or vaginal pearls, yeah? So, simple question. How should a normal vagina look like, feel like? Or smell like. Or smell, <laughs> smell like. <laughs> I was hoping you bring that up. Smell like. It should smell and look and feel normal for its owner. What is normal? There's no such thing as mine looks different from yours and so mine is not normal. Because that's where the first challenge comes in. Everybody has a belief system that there's a specific type that is normal. Um, generally speaking, most women have a comfortable normal. You know what kind of discharge you have. You know the smell to your discharge. You understand that with your menstrual cycle, it will change quite a bit. So you'll have maybe a whiter, um, gooier type of discharge mm -hmm. during just after your period. And then just uh, before and during ovulation, it becomes thin, watery, very slippery, more like mucus type of discharge. And then after ovulation, it goes back to being very little. It usually will be the same sort of whitish or cloudy color. And then your period starts, some women get sort of a brownish or a darker red discharge and then the period starts. Mm -hmm. And that's completely normal. So you can't sit and say, mm -hmm. my normal has to be, you know, and that's the mistake we make because we tend to have conversations with each other without the context of mm -hmm. any information. Right. So now I'm comparing directly to someone else mm -hmm. instead of finding out what normal, what falls under the blanket of normal. Um, what isn't normal, we can go into those mm -hmm. details mm -hmm. because that's how to best explain it rather than trying to define an exact normal. Right. If you're having discharge that has a change in the smell from what you're used to during all the different parts of your cycle, if it has changed color significantly, I mean green, gray, dark yellow, you know, really dark brown or clumpy discharge, the texture is different, um, you have pain associated or itchiness or burning sensation, then you know this is not normal and it's probably time to come see your doctor. Mm -hmm. um, the other mistake we make again, consulting <laughs> <laughs> within, <laughs> under the table. Right. And so by the time you come in to see us, you've done everything mm -hmm. and anything. And unfortunately, it's no longer the primary issue. A lot of times we're dealing with even more severe issues than what we would have been able to treat if you came mm -hmm. immediately. Mm -hmm. yeah. How about the smell? The smell, again, it's very unique to each and every individual. Um, you, we are not built to smell like pineapples <laughs> or strawberries. <laughs> We're not built, we're you say unfortunately, <laughs> because some people expect, you know, strawberries exactly. and pineapples, and like, like you're saying. Where did that expectation come from? I don't know. Because you know what your normal is, right? So it's very different for different women. And again, you will know what is your normal. You will become aware of a change and it's the individual. So a lot of times when our women come in and as our patients, we're able to, let to, to, to listen to you mm. and you describe and you say, no, the smell has changed. It's offensive. It's very foul. Um, it smells like most commonly we hear fishy odor. Mm. Um, and you know that that's not normal. And if that's the case, then yeah. again, we need to listen to the patient and start the treatment, mm -hmm. investigate appropriately and start treatment. But there's no such thing as I'm going to smell like roses or I, I mean, it's like. <laughs> so anybody who's <laughs> thinking that is daydreaming, they're building yeah. castles yeah. in there. Stop. <laughs> yeah. Okay, um, 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 in my research, Gertrude, I had you talk about something to do with having a, a relationship, an yes. intimate relationship mm -hmm. with Miss Victoria. Yes. I'm offending you, dog. <laughs> <laughs> when I call her that, okay. <laughs> Miss, with your vagina. I mean, yes, we should be in a position ahead, where we can yes. say it's it, night, you know, night. <laughs> without fear. Okay, for sure. <laughs> right? Okay, okay. So talk to us about having that kind of relationship because doc here tells us you should be able to know what's your normal yeah yes. so how do i as a woman establish a relationship with my vagina such that when things are not right i'm the first one to know and not mm. my partner not mm. anybody else exactly and uh doctor talked about discharge do you not know most women they don't want to know that they have a discharge. So every time I talk to women, they'll tell me, no, 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 I'm fine. I don't have a discharge. I'm like, if you don't have a discharge, then there's a problem. Because mm -hmm. every Miss Victoria has a discharge. And I keep telling people we should make discharge as, you know, daily conversation. Hi, how are you? How are your kids? How is your husband? How is your discharge? It should be part of the conversation. Do you think we're ready for that? <laughs> 
we are not, but we, it should be. Otherwise, yeah. we will not have been taken for a ride with all these bouquets and all these things which have mm. been banned, sure. you know? Sure. So um, I normally advise women, like Dr. says, you need to know you're normal. Mm -hmm. You are not going to know that if you're always, uh, if you're staying out too far away from your Miss Victoria. So every time before you shower, I'm assuming everybody wears an underwear, smell it. Mm -hmm. You know, then mm -hmm. take your shower, then smell the underwear again. Then you get to know you normal. And then we keep forgetting we are what we eat. You know, okay, we don't smell like the roses and stuff, but there's some foods we eat. It gives us a stronger smell. And that makes so many women uncomfortable. And some men who are not very well informed, they're just saying, oh, uh, the vagina is supposed to smell like a fish. I'm like, no, 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 no. It's okay for a fish to smell like a fish. But for Mr. Richard to smell like a fish, that's not normal, mm -hmm. okay? But because us, ourselves, we don't know the normal. So if you keep smelling, then you'll be, you, you will know uh, when it's off. I can smell a... Uh, an infection miles away, yeah. you know, before even the itching starts, I can tell it's a little bit off, okay? And if you're very particular and it bothers you so much, uh, you can use like the drink, the pineapple, and it's not the packet, the processed, it's always fresh fruit, mm -hmm. you know, uh, warm water and a slice of lemon, just to neutralize, especially some, some of us love the, for me, the smellier, the food, the tastier. I mean, mm -hmm. really, talk about mkunde and matumbo, uh -huh. a combination of the two, mm -hmm. so you can imagine. Okay, I love cabbage, it's all, it always features. Yes, I wanted us to get there, cabbage. Yes. Many people say, think if you eat cabbage, you become too wet. It's been a myth forever. I don't eat cabbage, I don't want to be too wet. I'm like, no, 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 no. Okay, cabbage doesn't make you too wet. Otherwise, people will be following me up with a bucket because I'm dripping wet all over the place. Okay. You right. know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's not.